Father, we thank you and we thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful day, this gift of life that you have given us and everything you have made available for us, Lord. This is your gift of grace that even though we don't deserve, you make everything happen for us. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire session. You think through my mind, speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I take authority over every demonic spirit of distraction, disturbance and unbelief, which has come to steal, kill and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you get out of this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. So today, I'd like to begin with a small testimony which happened over this week. So this particular week, we... Our department had organized a class for the deacons, a health class on the deacons, where we, we each one of us was assigned a task, you know, a small particular uh, topic on health, and we had to teach them for that particular day. So I was allotted that class on Tuesday, and my topic was something on first aid, how to give basic life support how to, you know, what are the first aid measures you would do as a lay person that can save somebody's life. And I had to teach 47 deacons, okay? And the feedback that I had received that, you know, from my seniors, from my teachers, mentors and all was that, uh, you know, the challenge is not only to take the class, but, uh, you know, you have to keep their attention also because they get distracted. Their young men on their journey to become priests. So they are going to, you know, they, they're going to ask you a lot of questions. They're going to be a lot of things. As I went there, I just made a small prayer saying that, Holy Spirit, you are in control. And thank you, Lord, I find favor in your eyes and in the eyes of men. And I started teaching them. So as it went on, um, they really enjoyed my teaching, the class and everything. And uh, just to make them, you know, make the class a little more interactive, I wanted to show them a video of how to do a first date. So I connected my laptop to the screen and I was, you know, uh, using, opening the particular video. But what uh, happened is, while they were watching the video, I had signed in into my uh, YouTube channel, the same channel where I take my Bible study. So some of them picked that up, okay, and they went into it to see what is happening. And in the break time, they said, you know, uh, ma'am, you did not tell us that uh, we really liked your class and it was very interesting, but uh, you did not tell this to us, but we know you're a missionary. We know what you're doing. And I said, how did you know? So they said, ma'am, when you signed into the, your um, YouTube and you were showing us the videos, we saw your channel name and we were curious to know what is happening. And that's how many people, you know, uh, they got to know about this. And at the weekend, that is on Friday, we concluded with the overall Deacon's course. And, uh, you know, they were very touched by, you know, I just took one day, but they were very touched by the way I took class. And at the end, we had a tea session and that's where, you know, they wanted to talk to me and interact with me. And that's where I got a chance to, you know, briefly share my testimony of why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, I got many feedbacks from them saying that, you know, ma'am, when you came and took class for us, there was a special grace and this grace has come from Christ. So I wanted to give this testimony to glorify the name of Jesus. Now, why am I sharing this? Okay. Um, as all of you all know, I started my journey with the Lord somewhere in 2020, 20 from the COVID times. It's been almost four years now. So at that point in time, 
I never knew what God's plan for my life was. Many a times we go on our own thinking. We think, okay, I have to go this way and this way. What I'm trying to say is, we sh- I'm not saying that we should not take a step in faith and we should not reach out. Of course, I took a step in faith. I started Bible study and it is faith that pleases God. And I learned so much throughout this course. But what I realized is that I should never limit God. My relationship with Holy Spirit is not a formula. You can be a blessing wherever you are planted. That's what the Holy Spirit is making me realize in this season of my life. Maybe now when I see, I'm not able to do much of the Bible study classes as I used to do before. But in my workplace, where the Lord has planted me, He is using me. I'm seeing people, you know, getting impressed, getting touched with the way I do things. And deep in my heart, I know it's not me. I know it is the Lord. And whatever I'm saying, I'm giving you a scripture for that. Can we go to Colossians 3 verse 23? And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Do it heartily. In other translation says, do it with all your heart as though you're working for God and not unto men. Many a times we compartmentalize our spiritual life and our professional life. We think, okay, from this time to this time is work time. This time to this time is me time. And this time to this time is Jesus time. But actually, that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm telling this out of experience. I've realized that in everything I do, I need the help of the Holy Spirit. Whatever things, even my studies, it's not like I can do it without Him. There are so many challenges that come. But every time it's Him who's helping me. Today also, I had plan certain things in such a way that you know I will do it but suddenly another task came and uh, you know it kind of uh, had I had to change so many plans but then I said it's okay even though Holy Spirit even though this has come suddenly I'm not going to get worried because Holy Spirit is with me and he's giving me the wisdom so in anything that we do when I do it as though I'm working for God And not for people. It pleases God. And that's where I see I begin to enjoy whatever work I'm doing. Wherever I am. We may not necessarily open our mouth and preach Christ. Okay. At every place. But with our actions. With the way we live our life. People can get touched. And you know this whole week. uh, What they recognized. It is not them. It is the Lord showing them the anointing. Whatever you do, when you do it for the Lord, without any selfish motives, without any anything, you know, uh, any intentions which are other than what God has for you, God is working behind the scenes. And He reveals. He make, He brings it in the open. And that's why I want all of you all to, you know, I want you all to be encouraged and know that, you know, even though nobody is seeing you, what you're doing, the Lord is seeing, he's seeing, and he's pleased when you're doing it for him. And the feedback, what they said is, ma'am, more than this class that you took, we got touched by what you're doing for the Lord, because we As deacons, we are on our journey to become priests. But you're a doctor and you're still doing this. And that's what's inspiring us. So I wanted to share this for the glory of God. Praise God. Uncle, you want to say something? Yeah. 
Praise God, Priya. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Your testimony was so beautiful. All that you're doing is for the glory of God. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Because we are all called to do it not unto men, but we are told to do it unto God. So that when we do it unto the Lord, surely God is glorified. So we say, Santa, what's that when, when, whenever we do anything and it is all done not unto men but unto the Lord, surely the Lord is glorified. So he is the one who deserves glory in everything. And the moment we do it for him, then we know and we know that God will always be glorified in everything we do so that those who see us, will what they will do? They give glory to our Father in heaven. Beautiful. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and Jesus. That's where I realized, Uncle, because they saw that they got touched, then sharing my uh, testimony of how I got touched by the Lord, they got inspired. And this was so beautiful because, you know, uh, like in the past, I have seen, you know, it's like a trial and error basis where uh, we, when we are so much in fire for the Lord, we, you know, we don't ask the Holy Spirit. We just go and we want to tell everybody. We want everyone to listen to what we are saying without giving them time, without, you know, living that out. I have been in that phase of my life. And that's why I want to share that with the, every person who is here, because I'm also still in that journey. I'm learning. And if this is happening with me, you know, the Lord can use you also mightily. So Amen. praise God. Amen. Amen. Anybody in this class would like to share on something what Priya has just shared? I want to also draw your attention to another. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I also want to draw your attention to another scripture, which is from Colossians 3.17. It's in the same letter to the Colossians. And it says, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You know, when we took, take an approach that whatever I'm doing, whether I'm working in my corporate life or Sister Priya is as, as a doctor, or whether I'm doing my work in the home or as a mother or as a wife, whatever I'm doing, whether it's I'm doing some work or I'm or I'm speaking, it's not me, but I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. When I do it in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him, there are two things which happen. One is it brings glory to God. And the second is, even though I may not be, you know, I may not be applauded by men or I may not be praised by people, it doesn't really matter because I'm not doing it for the people. I'm not even doing for myself, for my self-glory, but I'm doing it for the Lord. So at the end of the day, it is Jesus in me who's being glorified. And that's what happens when you do something heartily as though you're doing it for the Lord and not for men. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, another key I would like to share is, you know, um, you just ask the Lord, what are your natural abilities, your natural talents that God has blessed you with? For example, in my life, it is teaching. Teaching comes very naturally to me. Not from today, but from the day, you know, from the childhood only, I have been, uh, you know, good in teaching. I've always imagined myself, you know, wanting to teach. Even in medical school, you know, I would sit with my friends, my classmates, and if they would find a concept difficult, I would explain it to them. And that's where I realized, yes, teaching is my calling. Whether it's the Bible study, whether it is medicine, whether it's anything, any topic, I can, you know, I have the ability to make it very simple. And I'm not doing it on my own. It is a gift from God. So in the same way, the way you can serve the Lord is by you asking the Lord what you are, you know, 
what he has blessed you with that unique ability when you see somebody's life yes it is good to get inspired by the testimonies but what you must not forget is don't try to be the other that person god has made you unique just as every uh, fingerprint no fingerprint is the same the dna or the genetic material in each finger is so different that's exactly how unique and special you are to god because he has created you right so in the same way what you like doing you pursue that for example uh, even though i was studying medicine not many doctors will be passionate about teaching okay and uh, when i would tell people i want to do something related to teaching i'm inclined more towards teaching i would always get a negative response how can you like teaching isn't teaching so boring i'm telling you all these things out of experience so that you know what god has for you only that in in that you will have peace and you will enjoy doing it there will be many people to discourage you from your purpose your assignment don't you ever get distracted you ask the lord what what you have for me lord and i can tell you that because i really wanted to join this particular college for this course the moment i had finished internship but the thing is that here i had not written my exams and i wanted a break so i said no problem next year i will do it and in the meantime i got a job in goa where i was working as a medical officer in a corporate hospital that experience was good but i was not having peace over there i knew that was just a season in my life where god is training me and he's teaching me a lot of things but i'm not meant to be there forever in the same way whatever things i learned over there started becoming useful for me the moment i joined here it helped me so waiting on the lord's timing and doing what you are passionate what god has blessed you with without comparing yourself to others is a very important key in fulfilling your calling that god has for you in your life praise god praise god anyone else would like to add something on this i think you had shared on this uh, some some uh, weeks ago priya on yes. that 29 11 yes and, you know you had said um, when you are waiting on the lord there is a season that you may have to go through which is not really the place that god wants you to be in but whatever experience that you are getting in that place is going to help you in your expected end is going to help you to that place where god wants to bring you but in the meantime you just have to do those things of jeremiah 29 13 seeking the lord committing your ways to him finding him and searching him with all your heart being committed so to so with, with the little things with the faithful faithful in the little things that god has assigned you to do because you don't see it is a period where you may have to you may not understand why you are there at that point but later yes. on you will know why you know that was that season for you to be there in that place at that point of time but the important thing is you never you never look uh, you know never never go away from waiting and seeking on seeking the lord seeking the lord and finding him searching for him with all your heart being committed and being faithful to the little things that have been assigned to you in the meanwhile praise god yes, yes. sister exactly like we want the whole map when uh, we say okay god's plans for our life but the thing is god doesn't reveal it to us you know the whole plan he reveals it step by step because god's plans for us are much greater than what any of us can imagine and probably if he had to reveal it to us it would be too much for our brain to process so that is where you know i am learning so many things with the holy spirit praise god thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus anyone else anything you would like to add
any like similar testimonies what you have experienced so that we can have a discussion on this okay if there's nothing more then i have another topic a small you know reflection what the holy spirit has teach has been teaching me apart from this shall we go there yes we are okay can we go to 1 samuel uh, 17 verse 26 onwards and david spoke to the men that stood by him saying what shall be done to that man that kills this philistine and takes away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god and the people answered him after this manner saying so shall it be done to the man that kills him and eliab his eldest brother heard when he spoke unto the men and eliab's anger was kindled against david and he said why came down thou down hither and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness i know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart for thou art come down that thou might see the battle and david said what have i now done is there not a cause and he turned from him toward another and spoke after the same manner and the people answered him again after the former manner praise god so if you see okay i'll give you a little um, background to what this verse is saying this particular chapter is saying now in israel this was the time where saul was the king and david had been anointed okay but he had not yet become the king he was a shepherd boy he was taking care of his father's sheep okay and this was a time where goliath was the philistine who challenged israel to come and fight against him and everybody in israel was in fear now at that point david's elder brother eliab was in the army okay he was in the army and uh, he was helping the you know army of israel and david's father sent david to take sandwiches to him to serve his brother and what i appreciate here is david's humility he went to bring you know he took the sandwiches and he went to give it to his brother so on the way he what happens is he hears all this commotion about what goliath is saying and everybody is in fear now because of the anointing because of his relationship with the lord he spoke to the men that stood by him saying what shall be done to the man that kills goliath and takes away the reproach from israel so david is asking everybody else is speaking fear and david is speaking faith and that's where uh, the israelites tell you know the king has promised so and so reward and all those things now when when i was reading this particular scripture the holy spirit brought my attention to 1 samuel 17 verse 28 that says and eliab his eldest brother heard when he spoke unto the men and eliab's anger was kindled against david and he said why did you come here and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness i know your pride and the naughtiness of thy heart for you have come down so that you might see the battle his own brother was insulting him his own brother could not bear david speaking faith in our lives too wherever we are it can be our own family it can be you know the people we work with there will be situations where as you're progressing 
people around you will not be able to bear it they will try to put you down the way eliab was trying to put david down trying to insult him trying to mock him by saying what do you think of yourself why have you come here where did you leave those little sheep he was belittling david okay he was saying many things to david but what you know uh, i learned from this is and david said what have i done what have i now done is there not a cause so david was wondering now what did i do isn't there a cause and what we see here is david did not sit to think oh my brother said this and i'll do this or that and get into offense and he turned from him toward another he turned from his brother when his brother was speaking discouraging words he turned away from him and he went and continued asking the same question what was david doing what is he trying to teach us he's trying to teach us to ignore to overlook the negative things that are coming against us and to focus on what god is showing us the enemy knows your calling the enemy knows the potential that god has put in you and to destroy that he will put people in your life who will purposely come and say a lot of things to belittle you put you down so that you get distracted so that you get into offense so that you react you lose your patience and speak all the negative things and so that you get distracted from your focus please remember any time you experience this you are going to you know you are in a spiritual battle you are under an attack it's not the person but it's the enemy influencing that person to come against you so many times at my work i experience these situations where it's so easy to react where the flesh is screaming from inside but because the holy spirit is giving the guidance i quickly renew my mind and take decisions according to the word take decisions with love and patience not react yes you know as you're doing this in the beginning let's be honest we will react we will fall in our human weakness but the good news is we don't have to remain there you quickly change you pick, you quickly repent and you pay attention to what the holy spirit is saying then things go very calmly and that is where things are sorted out in peace whatever the enemy comes with you know an attack he comes to steal kill destroy ruin the peace ruin the atmosphere of peace wherever you are you know when you take decisions according to the word not reacting but rather like david ignoring the wrong things and focusing and continuing to do what god has called you to do that is the time there is that anointing of peace that is the time there is going to be supernatural things god himself is going to fight for you you don't have to fight praise god praise god praise god thank you jesus thank, thank you. you jesus uncle would you like to add on this beautiful priya you know what you said right now the difference between david and the rest of the people what was the difference what is the real difference between david's response and the response by the people what is the main reason what is the main difference because david was looking by the covenant through the eyes of the covenant with the lord yes he was looking to the eyes of the covenant but what stopped the others from looking uh, to the uh, to that everyone had a covenant everybody in israel had a covenant because of the circumcision they all had a covenant with the lord so what was different between david and the rest of the people the relationship the relationship and importantly was the anointing remember Samuel had anointed David. David was already anointed the next king of Israel. In fact, if you really go and see by this time, by this time 
David was already anointed by Samuel as the new king because Saul had already been disqualified. In fact, when David was sent by his father to the battlefield, by this time, all his brothers, all the brothers of David, they had known that in their presence, Samuel had anointed David as the next king. Now, they had not accepted that. that they had not accepted that. See, you can see the way, you know, Eliab talks to David. You can see from the manner in which David's father treats David. You know, he's treating him like a delivery boy. He still continues to be doing the, the job of, you know, looking after the sheep. If these people at home, like his father, his brothers had realized that he was anointed by, by the prophet, after all of them were rejected, what would you think they would have treated? Would they have treated David the same way? Would they have treated the David the same way? No. No, they would not have treated David the same way. If they had understood what that anointing or what that oil that was poured upon David did for for uh, or did for for David, his father would have actually put one of the other boys. You know what I'm saying? He would have put some other of his sons to look after the sheep and he would have now allowed David to, you know, really be looked after. He would have honored David. But you can see from the response of his father who continued to send him to look after the sheep. You can see from the response of his brothers when he came to the battlefield as a delivery boy, the way they approached him. And it was the anointing on David's life. It was the Holy Spirit anointing on David's life that allowed David to respond in a way which was different from all the other people. Fast forward to today. If we stay with David, then we will only hear it as a historical event. We'll say, yes, David was anointed. David knew the covenant. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, let's put it this way. Today, the day we accepted Jesus as our Lord, God and Savior, what did we receive? What did the Lord give us after we, were, after we accepted Jesus as our Lord, God Holy and Savior? Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That means all of us, all of us who have received the gift of righteousness have also received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Come on. Yes. All of us who have accepted Jesus as our Lord, God and Savior, are we like David or are we better than David? Come better on. than David. We are better than David because David received the anointing externally. David received the, the presence of the Holy Spirit externally because the Holy Spirit could still not dwell inside David. He was still not born again. The Holy Spirit could not, you know, abide in David. And yet we see the attitude of David only by an external anointing by Samuel and how much it changed the attitude of David. Today, we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We have God Almighty who lives inside of us 24-7. So if the Holy Spirit is, is inside of us, which, 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 is, which is true, then, my dear brothers, how should be our attitude? Should we be in fear? Are we going to let the situation dominate us? Are, is, is our, are we going to go based on sight? Are we going to based on our situation and circumstances? Are people going to tell us, like, somebody could turn around and tell Priya, hey, you're so young. Come on, you're so young. You know, there are people with gray hair, much older, much older doctors, much bigger preachers. And they could have, they can tell Priya, you just, you know, you're just young, you're bacha right now. Can, can Priya, you know, by hearing all these things, can she be discouraged or she cannot be discouraged? Priya? It's possible. Uncle, it's possible. So I have, whatever you're saying, it's a practical experience yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, Priya, when you know to whom you belong, when you know to whom you belong, when you know that you have the Spirit of God in you, 
you will say exactly what Jeremiah said when he was called to be a prophet. Do you know what Jeremiah said? He said to the Lord, Lord, you have chosen me to be a prophet. I am so young. I am so young. You are calling me to be a prophet. And what did the Lord say to him? Don't say you are young. Don't say you are young. I am going to anoint you. I am going to give you the anointing. And when I give you the anointing, when you open your mouth, those words that you're going to speak are going to bring, are going to hit like a hammer on the people and it's going to bring a change in their hearts. So if God could say that to Jeremiah, who's again an Old Testament prophet, come on, look at that. Come on, let's read that. Look at what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6. And then what does the Lord say in verse 7? Can we read that? But the Lord said unto Verse 6, verse 6. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of thy their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That means Jeremiah was no more going to speak his own words. Whose words was he going to speak? He was going to speak the words of the Lord because the Lord was himself going to put his words into Jeremiah's mouth. Now, you can imagine, my dear friends, that Jeremiah was used by the Lord when Jeremiah was so young. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet when he was, a, when he was so young. He, in his own words, he's saying, for I am a child. He looked at himself like a child because he said, if I go to all these people with gray hair, those who are all, you know, much older than me, those, you know, are more experienced than me, those who have walked the way much ahead of me, and I go and share with them, hey, they say, you're a bacha, you're a small boy, you don't talk. That's what he thought about himself. But look at what the Lord is saying. Don't say you're a child. Don't say you're a child. For thou shall go to, do, to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shall speak. So God was telling him, you are only going to be my instrument, and you're going to speak the words that I'm going to put in your mouth. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, today we are living in the new covenant. We are living in an era where the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. We are living at a time where it doesn't matter whether you are sweet 16, whether you are 20, whether you are 25, whether you are 50, whether you are 80. It doesn't matter. Your age doesn't give you any advantage when you are belonging to the kingdom of God. Are you listening, my dear brothers and sisters? Your age and the number of years that you have been on this earth gives you no advantage or no bonus points in the kingdom. But the day you accept Christ and receive the Holy Spirit, and now you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit, that's the time you are going to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You're going to yield to the Holy Spirit, and you are going to be usable whether you are sweet 16, whether you are 20, 30, 40, any age you are, because you are yielding to the Holy Spirit. And what Priya was sharing with us right now, what she was just sharing with us right now, is exactly what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah thought he was young. Now, Priya could think the same thing. Yes, she could be having a battle of her own, but she knows to whom she belongs. And that's why... It's not a compartment that when she preaches or when she shares the word or when she's going to the deacons or going to the, to the pulpit to preach, she knows that even though she's doing her medicine, she is doing her practical, she's going to the hospital, the Christ in her is now manifesting his glory through her. That's what Priya shared, right Priya? You said that when you were sharing it to the deacons, when you began to share to the people, they saw what you were saying. Now you could have, they could have probably seen that thing by mistake, 
but when they heard you speaking and they heard, and they saw your YouTube channel, they put it together. Ah, she's, she's a preacher. She's anointed. We can hear her speaking. Now they are paying attention to you. They could look at you and say, oh, she's a very young girl. She's a very young person now there. But now when they see the words coming out of your lips, they see the anointing coming out of your lips. They see the words that are flowing off your lips. They know that this is not a little child. They know that this is not a youngster. This is an anointed soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, my dear brothers, isn't this so inspiring when Priya is sharing with us? You know, when Priya is sharing, she so talked about being in Goa. She talked about being in the hospital there. She talked about all her challenges. You know, she has been coming often here. But you know what? She could have said, I think so. I'm, I'm doing medicine. I think I can, I can deal with my medicine. I'll deal with my studies. I'll do what I have to do. Preaching now, let it take a break. But yet she's enthusiastic to even at a workplace to share to deacons, to share to the people, to, to make a presentation, to come to this platform here and take out her time. Now, she's not somebody who's got all the time to waste. She's, she's doing a master's in medicine. She's doing an MD. And she must be having so many assignments apart, you know, from her own family commitments and, you know, doing her own work. And yet she finds time to come and glorify God how she is being used by the Lord, even at her workplace. Isn't this inspiring, my dear brothers and sisters? Isn't it inspiring for all of us? Come on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you know, we thank the Lord for Priya because... She is coming here and sharing her life story. She's sharing what the Lord, she's not sharing theory. She's sharing her own life. It's practical. It's practical. If Priya can do it, why can't we all do it? Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when she, a few minutes ago, when she said, is there anybody to share? Is there anybody who can give their testimony? Are we those, so, are we those people who are absolutely like on the fence of here in the pews? That when we have an opportunity to share something, that we have nothing to share, my dear brothers and sisters. Come on. Every one of us can share. If Priya can do it, I'm sure we all can do it. We all have been given the Holy Spirit. So when I open my mouth and speak, it's not what I'm sharing. It's the Spirit in me who's giving me that boldness, who's giving me that courage, who's giving me the wisdom, who's giving me the direction to bring glory to my Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Uncle, can I say something? Yes, Priya, please, please, go ahead. So, please, go ahead. This we give time, right? There's a scripture, Luke 636, which says, Give and it shall be given to you, full measure, shaken down, running. Luke 638, praise God. Luke, Luke 638. Yes, so what yes. we give to the Lord, we get it in multiple. Amen. Amen. I'm giving time. The last time also, I think a couple of weeks back, I had a presentation and I was in this class, I was preaching, sharing the word of God. The next day, the presentation went on so smoothly without any hassle. So whatever I have realized every time, the when the pressure comes, you know, there are so many things and the mind is speaking, The you know, there are senses are speaking, facts are speaking as to how many things are there, how am I going to manage everything? At that point, I just remind myself, you know, I'm not doing this alone. And what Jesus got pleased with, there was a woman, you know, he was sitting near the treasury. She had only two coins, two copper coins. Praise and she God. put it. And in that... The Lord was pleased because she gave whatever she had. We think, okay, we have to do very big things to please the Lord. No, God is only seeing our heart condition. Amen. In this time that I'm giving, what, am I giving it wholeheartedly or am I doing it out of an obligation? No, it shouldn't be that way. When you have relationship, you are ready to put in that time, even though it means sacrifice. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You know, I put, put something up on the chat, which is exactly what you have been sharing, Priya. I just heard this today itself from some another preacher. It says, what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. 
So sometimes, even though, it, you know, in our own discomfort, in our own inconvenience, we go out and be a blessing to others. God, in his generosity, in his kindness, he makes whatever we require to happen. Our work becomes so easy and so effortless because he's taking care of our job as we go and be a blessing to somebody else. And that's what exactly has been happening in your life, Priya. Praise God. Praise God. Exactly, sister. Because wherever I'm seeing the way things are going, you know, I'm seeing this constant favor of the Lord in anything that I do. There is, you know, there's an anointing. People cannot, um, they cannot, they don't know the word anointing. They may, but they know the meaning of the word of anointing. There's something very different about you is what, you know, people will say to you. Like, for example, even these deacons, I just had maybe four hours with them from nine o'clock to one o'clock. I was teaching them. I barely spent much time with them. I just spoke to them. I taught them whatever they had. But in those four hours, the Lord was working behind the scenes and making things that, you know, uh, that time that I spent with them impacted them so much. I never opened my mouth and spoke about Jesus over there until they personally asked me, you know, at the end of this whole session. I was just teaching what was given to me, but they could see the anointing. And the same way I want to encourage everyone here, don't think that, you know, just because you have not been on a pulpit and you have not preached, don't think that you need only a platform or a pulpit. Wherever you are, you are a blessing. Because who's called you? It is not your own calling. It is not, I decided I will come here. I responded. It was God's calling. Just as Jeremiah, um, you know, when God called him, initially he was hesitant. But when God reassured him, he took that step in faith. He responded in faith. Same way I also responded in faith four years back when the Lord touched me. And I'm seeing the fruit. And don't worry about making mistakes. It's going to be trial and error. You may not know many things. When I started my journey with the Lord, I was not at all perfect. But I'm glad today. I'm still a work in progress, but I'm not where I used to be. That is the joy. Praise so this is God. what I wanted to say. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Priya, you, you, you were able to share the word of God to deacons. Now, deacons are going to be eventually priests. They're going to be ordained they will be one day become priests. They'll go to the altar. They will be going to the pulpit. They'll be sharing the word. And now you getting an opportunity to share the word of God to the deacons. Do you think it just happened overnight? No. I'm asking you. God is pre God was preparing me for this. Exactly. It happened four years ago when you, during the COVID, you had a call from the Lord. You got touched by the Lord. You began to spend time studying the word. You began to share the word of God. You began to have your own platform. You had to prepare, you had to study, and then you would share the word. So your love for the Lord did not end only at the pulpit. Now, even though you are at your workplace, even though you are doing your studies, you know, the Lord says, he looks at your heart. Remember a few months ago when you came, I remember you sharing us and telling, you know, I'm not able to share the word of God. I'm involved at my workplace. And sometimes I wonder whether I have, I have deserted the Lord or whether I'm not sharing the word. I'm not finding time because I'm busy. And I remember telling you, I said, Priya, don't worry about sharing the word. The word is abiding in you. The word is inside of you. As you begin to get at your workplace, as you begin to do your post-graduation, as you begin to do your master's, that word inside of you, Put it into practice. You will be now preaching the gospel through the word abiding in you. Which is better? Going to the pulpit and speaking in words? Or is it still more powerful that the word is abiding in you and wherever you are planted, wherever you are working, wherever you are studying, that word inside of you is being now put into practice. And people are watching you. There may be people who never will hear Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They may never be able to come to the church and hear the gospel, but they are getting the live gospel from Priya right now by the very life she's living. Isn't this a wonderful testimony? Mm -hmm. Come on. 
I just want to tell you, my dear brothers, this is a powerful testimony of a child who really decided that she was going to live for the Lord. Yes, there are challenges. At her age, she could say, you know, with all her friends, come on, Priya, what is this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? You're preaching, going to deacons. Come on now, go for the movies. Let's have fun. Let's go to the beach. Let's go for the movies. Let's go to the pub. There could be so many attractions, distractions, and many things. But every time those distractions comes, Priya's relationship with the Lord supersedes every temptation. And now she gets promoted in the kingdom. She gets opportunities even now to be able to share the word of God to deacons. Remember, these are future people who are going to be leading the church. They are going to be ordained to go to the altar and celebrate the Eucharist. They are going to one day preach the gospel. But for Priya to get an opportunity to influence them with the word of God means the Lord says to Priya, that's what he's saying to you, Priya, that anointing which is over your life, that word that is inside of you, I want you to use it even at your workplace and I'm going to open opportunities for you to share the good news, not only to deacons, who knows, ordained priests and bishops may one day be hearing you, Priya, in the Amen. name of Jesus. I accept it. I believe it and receive it. Amen. Amen. You know, as you begin to grow in your, in your area, you know, and you are faithful to what you are doing, you know, God promotes you. God promotes you. It's our faithfulness in the small things. You know, when, you know, when we come to this class like this, I always believe that. When we come to this class and there is a call going on, is anyone having a testimony? Does anyone want to share a revelation? Anyone wants to add something? If we don't hear that voice of the Holy Spirit, somebody may hear Priya's voice, somebody may hear my voice, but actually speaking, if you believe that the one who's sharing has been anointed to share the word of God, is telling you, do you have anything to share? You may think that, you know, the focus may be on yourself. It's not on you. The glory belongs to him. The glory belongs to him. And when you have a relationship with the Lord, Surely you will have a testimony. Surely you will want to give glory to God. Surely you will have a revelation because of that relationship that you have, which is going to bless so many people who come to this Bible class. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So anybody else would like to share? Anybody would like to, you know, add to what, you know, this beautiful topic that Priya has been sharing with us today? Anybody, my dear brothers and sisters? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Priya, I don't know if there's anybody else or you want to go on any more further or we need to do the closing prayer now. Thank you, Jesus. I think, I think we will do the closing prayer if no one All has right. any anybody. Prayer. Anybody volunteering to do the closing prayer, my dear brothers and sisters? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody would like to close the session with a thanksgiving prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for speaking to us so beautifully through your messenger, Priya, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you have been doing in each of our lives. Lord, in the smallest little things that we do, Lord, when we take the approach that we are doing it heartily, not for people, not for men, but because it is you inside of us who's being glorified, who's doing the serving. Lord, thank you and praise you for having anointed us, Lord, to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that whenever we do things for others and we delight ourselves in you, Lord, you give us the desires of our heart. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you and praise you, Lord, for choosing us and calling us by name. Help us each day, Lord, as we spend time with you to understand and to discover what you have put in our hearts, the beautiful talents that you have endowed each one of us with, the uniqueness of each one of us. 
to understand our identity in you, Lord, so that, Lord, we can let go of our own inhibitions, our own pride, our own weaknesses and our own fears and step out in faith, Lord, and be a blessing to somebody, to be a blessing in your kingdom. Lord, thank you and praise you for abiding in us. It is Christ in us, the hope of eternal glory. Yes, Lord, that we can truly say it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live is by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.